Clip one time. Clip, clip one. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't bring my chart up. It's like you've got plenty. Um, okay, thanks. This is slide on the something like maybe. Oh, okay. I can sort of like maybe put it up here. Okay. Okay, now we're going to get into the interesting part of the presentation because we all know that, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, are you, are you all able to hear me? Yes. Okay, because uh, I never know how I sound with these things. Because um, we all know, just like they say in marketing, everybody is interested in what's in it for me. What about my chart? What about my realities? So before we go there, um, because obviously in the interest of time, I'm not going to be able to look at everybody's chart, and not everybody has a chart with them. Um, there's something that I'm offering because I know from talking to my clients and just, do, just observing people around me that these are very stressful times for many people. So I want them to be able to have the um, benefit of astrology and so what I am offering is if you sign up for my mailing list, which is over there, which requires that you just print your name and your email address, hopefully legibly, um, then several things will happen. First off, you get to be on my email list. And that means you'll be getting my a, subs a free subscription to Celestial Currents, which is my email newsletter. And that comes out about once a month. And I just give you an overview of what I see going on astrologically. Um, and I also offer that um, an astrological overview for the month um, as well by audio. And these are all free to my subscribers because my subscribers are very valuable to me. Uh, they mean a lot to me. Um, and also because you are here tonight and you're interested and you want to learn and you want to transform and you want to grow, I'm going to offer a special that if you want a one-on-one -on -one private session with me, and um, I'm going to offer a 90-minute session and do it at a 50% discount, but you have to sign the mailing list. Um, and that offer is good until Labor Day. So um, you have all summer to think about it or to make the appointment. And once you sign the mailing list, you know, I'll be in touch with you through the email list. And, you know, you can communicate with me. And if you do decide later on that celestial currents is not your cup of tea, then all you do is you just click on the unsubscribe button. And mine really works. <laughs> and I promise not to send you any offers of aluminum siding. <laughs> Um, or language courses. <laughs> so, 
what I want to do is, before I get started with charts, I'd like to open this up to questions. Um, does anybody have any questions? Okay, I see a hand over here. With the um, exact Uranus Pluto squares saying so many degrees Aries and Capricorn, um, does that mean both of us are getting it at the same time? Well, if you have. My brother is Aries on Capricorn. Okay. Well, it depends on where yeah. the planets are in Aries and Capricorn. And by the way, I should also say that those of you who are lucky enough to have planets or sensitive points in early Cancer and Libra are also feeling so um, because you're getting it by square or opposition. Um, so... Yeah, there's a lot of people who are feeling this energy. Um, so it just means that you get to be active participants. And if your chart is not in the direct path of the bullseye, then you get to watch what's going on. <laughs> and offer support. Yes? What exactly do you mean by retrograde? Okay. Retrograde is the optical illusion that a planet is moving backwards in the sky. What I mean by that is astrology is based on our viewpoint from planet Earth. This is how it looks from our vantage point. Now, we know from, from science class that all of the planets, including the Earth, revolve around the sun. But from the standpoint of Earth, it looks very different. And because of the relative speeds of the Earth's orbit around the sun and the orbits of the various other planets, it will appear at times that these planets will move ahead, then slow down and come to a halt, and then appear to move backwards that backwards motion is called retrograde. And what it means in, t in terms of astrology is that the energy of that planet is moving in a different direction. And generally it's an in internal direction. So it's a time for us to integrate. A different direction per se or a different direction relative to Earth? Well, it's all relative to Earth, but that's what we're looking at. That's how we experience the world. We're experiencing the world from our perch right here on Earth. Well, I understand that. But the energies, the energies are the same. Well, the energy, we're experiencing the energies as they appear. So let me give you the example of Mercury retrograde because everybody knows about Mercury retrograde. Um, People seem to fear that, no? Yeah. Well, because it's something that seems to be more palpable than some of the other retrogrades. It's more disruptive in terms of everyday life. Is it necessarily uh, negative? Is it portrayed or does it happen? Absolutely not. Um, it all depends on how you use the energy. And I'm not going to say that it can't be disruptive, but when a planet is moving forward, whether it be Mercury or any other planet, it's covering new ground. And we live in a culture where we like things to move forward 24-7. And we, you know, we're very linear. We don't understand the, idea, the concept of stop and take a breath. And when Mercury goes retrograde, it will slow down and it will appear to come to a halt, as all other planets that move, that retrograde. And when, it, when that happens, it's not time to move ahead when you're dealing with Mercury-related items. 
and that could and mercury rules communication it rules our mental function so oftentimes we run into situations when mercury is retrograde where we double book our schedules uh, our computers act a little strange so back up your computers but you should be doing that anyway um, you know so on and so forth but when mercury is moving backward it's saying go back and look at all the mental stuff that you did before go back and refine go back and rework so that could be anything from literal literally editing something to reworking a project to doing research anything with the prefix re is good mercury retrograde material also a good positive use of mercury retrograde is to reconnect with people that you've kind of lost touch with people that are in marketing if you have stale sales leads uh, people you haven't heard from mercury retrograde is the time to reconnect and what I recommend to my clients is that when you're planning out your year take those mercury retrogrades and use those periods to do mercury retrograde projects that's the time to get caught up on your bookkeeping that's the time to get caught up with paperwork um, and the only thing is you don't want to sign major contracts then you know unless you've been working on it for a long time um, and you don't want to initiate new actions then but that doesn't mean you can't do a whole lot of other things the purpose behind the retrograde energy is to give you breathing space so that you can integrate we can't just keep going blindly ahead blindly ahead and I was just having a conversation about that it's like when you go to school and you're mastering a new subject you'll see the teacher if if that person is a good teacher will off, will go over that material more than once especially if it's complex because you may not get it the first time well mercury retrograde that's the universe telling us to take a breath okay you have a question Well, I mean, originally, uh, astronomy came from astrology. And up until maybe um, the middle of the last millennium, you know, so we're talking maybe, you know, say, 16, 1700s or so, all the astronomers that you read about in your history books and science class were astrologers. Um, and they were looking at the skies they were looking at the heavens now granted if you go up in a space capsule and you look at things from that perspective it does look a little different but the astronomical information about what where a planet is what its cycle is is um, something that we both use in fact the astrologers use a, a book called an ephemeris which is nothing but a table of astrological placements they're astronomical placements guess where we got them from you go on NASA's websites and you can see these placements going out to year 3000 so there is a lot of cross-pollination now they don't realize they won't look at us and say we're going to take from astrology but you know we take from astronomy Yes, you have a question. Um, this is not really a direct question about astrology, but I was watching um, Neil deGrasse Dyson uh, on YouTube a couple of, over the last month. Apparently, the, astro the, astro the, astro the science community has taken the uh, label Pluto, I think, is not being repainted anymore. They're basing it on the con what, what these the various planets are made of. And it's more BSES and it doesn't fit. 
Well, ba basically, the astrologers had a big laugh. Um, <laughs> and I say that because we know from our experience with Pluto and Pluto transits that it's a big player. Um, and there were some politics that went on when Pluto was quote unquote demoted and not the entire scientific community doesn't agree with that decision. Um, I mean, that, that's a subject I could go off on, but um, you know, they're not unanimous about it. But as far as astrologers are concerned, we don't have any doubts about it. Pluto is major. How Plutonian. <laughs> How, well, yes. Do I, any more questions? You have a question. Okay, the, what happens is all of the planets with the exception of the sun and moon will retrograde at some point. So they, it's like two, step fo two steps forward, one step back, or, two, or one step forward, two steps back. You, you sort of have this dance going on with all of your planets, including your outer planets like Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune. And um, so as they slowly move through their respective signs, they're not moving through in a straight line. They're moving through a little bit back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Over time, they will finally move through their respective signs. But as they're doing this, they will form an exact 90 degree relationship and then that relationship will loosen and then it will tighten as they slowly march forward. And in one of the handouts that I gave you, I gave you the dates and the locations of the exact Uranus Pluto hits and yes, okay, and you'll see that the, act the locations of those hits change. And already both planets have gone, you know, part ways into their respective signs. So if you had zero degrees of Aries or Capricorn, they're past you now. You can, relieve, you can be relieved. In 2008 and 2010, you were getting hit on the head. But now it's past you. Now, you know, right now, those planets are at eight degrees of, of, uh, urine of Capricorn and Aries. So if you have anything that's eight degrees of Cardinal, which is Capricorn, Aries, Libra, or Cancer, now you're getting hit by it, you know, you're in the bullseye. And later on, you know, it's going to go further into the sign. You look a little puzzled. Are you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me backtrack and thank you for bringing that up. Basically, when astrologers are looking to posi at the positions of the planets, they're looking at the degrees of a circle. Um, we're looking at where the planet lies relative to what we call the ecliptic. And if you could imagine the ecliptic going all the way out, the ecliptic is the sun's apparent path around the earth. Um, and if you could imagine this as a plane going all the way out, you know, when you're plotting the position of the planets on this path, this path is a circle. And every circle, no matter what it represents, every circle has 360 degrees. So um, when we're talking about the positions of a planet and we're talking about degrees, we're, we're talking about which one of those 360 degrees that planet is at. 
And that actually leads me into the next part, which are the charts. Yes. No, each sign is 30 degrees. No. And that gets into a little bit more technical stuff than I want to get into right now. But there's, there's, a, there's astronomy behind that. There's, you know, as to why the houses don't line up exactly with the signs and why some houses are bigger than others. And that also depends on which house system you like to use for those of you who are more technical. Um, but a sign is always 30 degrees of arc. Um, so, okay, so let's, let's look at some charts. And what I'm really looking at is I want to see where I can give you examples about what's going on. And um, so just bear with me for a moment. And Barbara, I'm going to pick on you. And I see that your sun is at three degrees of Aries, so I know that you're very direct and immediate. And for you, the sun is at three degrees of Aries. Now, the good news for you is that, sa that, is that Pluto and Uranus are past. But I would conjecture that maybe about a couple years ago, your life was very interesting. So, you know, maybe, why don't you tell us what happened? If you want to share, I don't want to put you on the spot. What's that? Okay. All right. And that's a big thing to make a physical move. Um, and I also see that, you know, we, you know, we also look at some of the eclipses, you know, sometimes those are trigger points and, um, about earlier this month, there was a lunar eclipse that occurred right on your, uh, on the, on your 10th house, fourth house cusp, which is what we call the ICMC axis. So um, that was a time for you of letting go, of releasing energy. Does it? School's over. Okay, there you go. Well, well, enjoy it. Enjoy. Um, Okay, and John, I'm going to take a look at your chart. And what, in, what catches my eye, well, there's two things. First off, you have Neptune at three degrees of Libra. So you were feeling this energy at the same time as Barbara. So what was going on with you? Oh, wow. Well, you know, I mean, ultimately, I can describe the energies out there, but each of us are going to have our own personal experiences. And in some cases, it's because, it's because of the events that happen to us. And in some cases, it's, it's our reactions to those events. 
and I would follow up with that, you also happen to have the, the sun at three degrees of Pisces. Now, I didn't, you know, I, I mentioned Neptune in passing, but Neptune went into Pisces, and right now it's sitting on your sun. So this is a time for you to really expand your spiritual sense and to go deeper. Um, you know, you could say this is a time over the next year or two that you'll be having, you'll be awakening more and more spiritually. Yeah, it's a wonderful time. So, um, you're welcome. Now, Anthony, I noticed that you have the moon at zero degrees of Leo. Now, I didn't mention Leo too much. Leo makes what we call a trine aspect to the, the sign Aries. And uh, back in 2008, 2010, when a lot of people were getting whacked over the head, you were probably sailing through some of this because a trine is an aspect of integration. It's also an aspect where energy flows more easily. Now, now that probably is not true at this point in time, you know, because um, you, I see you have a pl cluster of planets in Aries. You have Mercury at 11 Aries, all the way to the Sun at 17 Aries. So your life is going to be getting very interesting in the next, you know, next couple years. Um, and you happen to have these planets in what we call the 11th house. So you might be meeting some very interesting people. Your friends may change, the groups that you associate with. Or you may be going interest to interesting places with some of these groups. Um, you know, and as... Aries goes over these planets, you may find that there's some things that you're drawn to that excite you. Um, and I would say that would be the time to experiment. That's a time to let yourself loose. You know, let yourself taste some of this and try it out. You know, try different, you know, try out different people, different activities, so on and so forth. Uh, so I see a pretty exciting time coming up for you for like the next, um, you know, the next two, three years. Um, and it's also a time where you're not, where you're going to feel restless. If you feel restless or when you start feeling that way, look at that because that's telling you something. That's telling you that... Um, whatever you've been putting up with no longer serves you, that it's time for a change. Um, so, you know, just be nimble and just be very fluid and just accept what life has to offer. Can I ask you a question, a generational question? Yeah. Well, that's, that's a generation that's going to transform us because you can't have a powerhouse like that. Yeah. Yeah, we're, well, they, they may play an important part. Um, people that are affected directly by these planets may choose to become agents of change themselves um, 
and that is one of the ways this can work itself out. Another generation I would also watch is the generation of people that were born in the mid-60s because they have Pluto and Uranus conjunct in, in Virgo and now these planets are making the square aspect it's sort of a reverberation for them so they're feeling a lot of this energy too so anybody that is like that and sometimes these things do come in generational increments these will be where some of your innovators will come from but anybody who has a planet in any sector of the horoscope that is being impacted directly potentially can be an innovator during this period of time. It's just that we may see some clustering among some of these other groups. Um, let's see. Is there anybody that has a chart that didn't give me? Oh, you have a question. Oh, no, I don't have a chart. Oh, all right. Come on. Let me see. Oh, okay. Um, oh, we got some more charts. All right. Okay. All right. We'll have to be, we'll have to be brief with them. Um, and I'm just looking at them for the first time, so bear with me. Now, Sally, I see that you have three planets in your ninth house. You've got Mars and Venus in Cancer. Now, Mars is at the very end of the sign. Venus is at 14 Cancer. So as we get, as we get towards the end of um, the Uranus-Pluto period, around 2015, you'll be getting the direct hit. And that will probably... Probably by, this, by the time these planets make it through um, your whole thinking, your whole philosophy will change. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. At this point, I'm not sure that my brain and my mouth can, um, can uh, work together, talk about planets in the sky. The brain and the mouth have their issues too. At least mine do. Um, but, um, you know, on a broader level, your whole outlook on the world, your whole mode of thinking over these next few years is going to change a great deal. You know, it's, some of your assumptions will be tested and Ultimately, your viewpoints will be widened. They'll, they'll, be, they'll be broadened. So, um, and uh, let's see. And Diva, you too have gone through a, a metamorphosis, a change in some of your Diva, okay, in some of your thinking. Jupiter in your chart is at one degree, almost two degrees of Libra. So back again, we're going back to 2010, 2009 or thereabouts. Um, these planets impacted Jupiter. Jupiter is our sense of connection with the wider world. Where do we fit in the wider scheme of things? Um, it's also the place we go to get a sense of faith. 
you know, for some people that may be a religion or a philosophy, um, I would conjecture not having met you before and just looking at this cold for the very first time that your ways of thinking about the world, uh, about your place, maybe about your just core philosophies have gone through a real shift. Does that resonate? You know, maybe you were opening up to learning about things that you didn't explore before also. My music has opened in the last few years. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and is that, okay, this is you. And in this particular chart, they didn't tell me what degrees the, these were. That's okay. 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 It's probably somewhere, it looks like this is a report that you got at some point. All right. I might have to look around. I may not 